guys, welcome to Smooth Workshop. Um, Terry here. Thought it was a wee while since I've done um, a kit review. I've got quite a few um, Tamiya 112 scale motorbikes in my stash. Uh, I started off with some of them. I'm doing them in numerical order. Um, some of my stuff is vintage, really hard to get. Tamiya's not producing them anymore and you can only get them on the likes of eBay or from Japan or whatever. I don't have the whole range in my stash. I've got a decent range in my stash. And I'm getting on is some of the ones that are a bit more modern. <laughs> um, some of them are available still. Some of them are a bit harder to get. Next one we're going to go into here is <clears throat> a Honda. Now, this one is Tamiya part number 14057. It's a Honda VFR750. Now, this bike was first introduced in 1989. Okay, 1989. We're going back 28 years. That was the new tooling in 1989, and the kit hasn't been changed since. And you'll be pleased to know that the kit is still available. Ooh. Okay. So, I'm going to go through my usual um, unboxing with these. So, I'm going to stick this up against here. Apologies for my camera whooshing about. But here we go. Here is the lovely, lovely box art here on... I'm just going to slacken my camera off a little bit. Apologies. As I say, I'm just getting back into this. I had a lot of hardware issues in that, which kind of stopped me doing it. This is a box art of the Honda VFR 750. Honda fans... Don't tend to go with the VFR 750, they go with the model names, so this is the RC30. So this is another 112 scale uh, motorbike, uh, it's a water-cooled four-stroke, double overhead cam, but it's a V4, which is quite unusual in bikes actually. Um, usual realistic rubber tyres, blah blah blah. And this is the front box art, looks very very nice. Let's just flick this up here. I have a look at this side. It's all written in ning tong ting tong Japanese here, but it's just showing the bike and it's lovely with a wee bit of cut through. Okay. This is showing it as nineteen eighty-eight, even though I say it's eighty-nine was the original first release. So this is a first generation kit. Now Tamiya are bringing out so I have noticed some of their early kits, even the 001. The first kit they ever brought out, that's the Kenny Roberts bike. I've noticed these models are stocking it. So it looks like they might be redoing some of them. So again, here's a little bit of the box art. A bit of Japanese. And then it's going into showing you some of the some of the parts on the side. Okay, on the either end, this one is basically telling you it's Item number 57, which is the 57th bike that Tamiya ever made. Uh, detailing the bike with a clear front cowling, showing all the detail. That is an option on this kit. And the other end, again, is basically the same. So that's the box art. So I'm just going to stick that up there, put my camera back where it normally goes. And tilt it back up a little bit. So, okay. We're going to take the top off this box. Now, I've had this in my, my kit stash for a while. I'm just going to stick that at the back there. I have had this in my stash for quite a while now. As I say, it's a 28-year-old kit. Whether this one's actually 28 years old or whatever, I don't actually know. They've not revised it. It's the original tooling. So basically you're building the same kit as 28 years ago. But we'll have a wee look and see. So on the top of the box is the usual uh, Tamiya black and white um, instruction manual with a black and white photo of the bike. And a little bit of detail about the bike. So I'll just hold this still just for a second just in case somebody is able to freeze frame and read all the blurb about it. Okay, that's as far as I'm going with that. People following 
all the Tamiya builds will know that they either start with the engine or the frame. In this one, that's all Japanese, but it does have all the colour callouts up here on the top right. And we're actually getting into, they've started doing the TS range of paints here, which is the spray tins. And it's telling you uh, TS-17 gloss aluminium for the frame. Typical X1, X2, X3, blah, 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 blah. Um, all the colours going down on here, so I'm just going to hold that still, hopefully. If you want to read what paints is in it. Right, that's as far down as it goes. And up a little bit. You can pause it and see what the paints are. I'm not going to spend too much time, because it's just a brief unboxing and review of the kit. I'm just going to do a general run through. Um, typical Tamiya build order, fully detailed, detailing uh, the part numbers of the parts and the paint colours that you need to do. And item number one is detailing the assembly of the frame. Good thing about this, I haven't checked the rest of the kit yet. If you need to paint any of this, you can paint it all beforehand before sticking the engine in. Part number two is going on to... The two engine crankcases going together, an end case going on, the sump going on, the starter motor. Uh, here it looks like you're putting oil filter on. The other end casing and the sprocket casing. So I'm just going to fold this about a little bit. Again, this is just a brief run through of the instructions. Um, we go into part number three where it is detailing oil pumps, water pumps. Uh, cylinder barrels, cylinder heads, spark plugs and because it's V4 how to angle the spark plugs um, then putting the two banks of cylinders onto the, the crankcases to give you the V4 and then it details you putting the engine into the frame so the good thing is you can paint the frame, paint the engine, detail it all up and then screw the two of them together then in typical Tamiya fashion, they then go on to the rear suspension. On this one it's a single-sided rear swing arm. Uh, rear disc, caliper, and all that going on there. And then they go into the, the, the rear shock absorber anti-bouncing up and down in with a real spring by the looks of it. And how that goes together and details the paint of that. And then you've got the, the chain and sprocket here. And that going on to the rear swing arm. Uh, we'll go on to four now. Five, six actually, sorry. Get my teeth in. It then details, obviously after you've painted it all, putting the rear swing arm and shock absorber assembly and the chain sprocket and the single sided swing arm into the frame. And then it tells you in step seven to go into the exhaust. Now these are going to be quite complicated exhausts because it's V4 so they're going to be twisting about all over the place. So it details the paint colours, how to put the parts together, and then the rear silencer together, and then how to hook this up on the fr inside the frame, onto the engine, and then the other part of the exhaust onto the engine, and just basically detailing how the exhaust gets built into the frame. So we're looking at frame, engine build, then exhaust on this model. So that takes you up to eight. Number 9 is still detailing you on the engine and the other. So you've got the front two banks. This previous part was the rear two banks of the V4. So putting those in. Then it goes onto the air box and four carburetors, which take the fuel into the engine. And then we've got the, uh, the radiator and oil cooler and the fans. And then it goes on to the, how to put the rear tyre onto the wheel. Obviously, you paint the wheel before you put the tyre on. And uh, how to fit the airbox assembly onto all the frame with the coils and uh, the vinyl tubing onto the spark plugs. How to put the radiator on and the vinyl tubing that goes for the radiator. And how to put the back wheel on and obviously the, the rear tail cowling or mudguard. Uh, which would hold the number plate and the reflector and everything like that. So hopefully you're picking all that up. Uh, single sided, so the way Tammy has done it is they put a screw through one side and you've got a wee nut with a little spanner to put that on there. So that takes you up to number 11. Number 12, as per normal, we go into the front 
front wheel, so you've got your front wheel which you'd paint separately and your two front discs which you would paint separately, then glue them onto the front wheel, then put the front tyre on. It then goes onto the front shocks and the front mudguard and the bottom yoke and the top yoke and all the rest of it. Ideally painting these all up separately then gluing them all together. It then goes down into, now I'm assuming because there's quite a lot of decals on this, There'll be a base coat goes on the rear cowling, uh, which most likely will be a white, and then it details the, the red decal, and then the blue decal, and it all glued together with the seat pad and everything, and then putting the rear cowling onto the bike, along with the number plate, rear indicators as it's a road going bike, a little uh, side fairing here putting the front forks on and the little brace that holds the, the front screen on. So that's number 13. Number 14, it goes into the speedo and tachometer. Um, obviously what colours to paint it up and then applying the decals for the speedo, tachometer and possibly water temperature gauge there. I haven't really looked at it. Then tells you to build up a paddock stand for it so you can, you can hold the bike up. Uh, it goes through the spindle at the rear, how to make up the front headlight assembly, uh, what else have we got here, uh, details of all the tubing going from the tank breather, um, some more side panels, uh, gear lever change, rear foot pegs, seat, tank, everything like that going on, and then now, what's quite interesting in this one, which is quite good actually, because they give you two fairing options, is then you put the fairing assembly with all the paint colours and the, the, the decals and transfers on it onto the bike. This kit gives you an option of a clear fairing, where you can put the decals onto that. Oh, a little fly. Strange little fly. Go away. Oh no, I've marked my... Hmm, strange flies here. Um, it gives you a clear plastic front cowling um, that instead of painting you can put the decals on to make it look real but you can see through it to see what's underneath or you can put the fully painted one on so that's an option and it's interesting to note that you can put the fairing on afterwards quite often with a full fairing on these bikes you have to leave the front forks off put the front fairing on and then build the forks up but this one lets you do it separate details putting the side stand on bottom belly pan, there's a little bit of mesh by the looks of it to simulate the air intake here for the oil cooler. Uh, again, the paint callouts and the decal callouts for that. And then it's mirrors on, um, belly pan on, stuff like that. And it's, it's calling out all the parts and all the paint colours on there. So that's us up to 15. So what's after that? That's it. On the back, it gives you all the markings for putting the decals on, where the various decals go. Okay, so there's quite a few, I wouldn't say it was highly decal intensive, but there are quite a few decals on it. I wouldn't say this was a base kit, this is going into their, their middle of the range kits. Um, so there's a bit more work on these, planning out wise and decal wise, but that's basically the instructions. So we'll put them to one side. Right, going into the top of the box, what else have I got here? Right, okay, I've got a big pack of decals in here. And I'm just going to pull these out. Right, looking at these decals, they're all red and gold. So if you look at the bike, it's white, red, blue, white. So it looks like some of the paint callouts are going to call you to mask off white and the blue, and then the red de the the red parts are all going to be decals. So we do have a set of decals here. Uh, I'm just having a look at these. Mm, nothing printed on the back. These are Tamiya decals. Now, whilst these are in good condition, considering it's a, it could possibly be a 28 year old kit. These are the really, really thick decals. So these are going to be a bit of a pain to go on. I know that just from previous experience. So we're going to need a lot of uh, 
have I got it handy? You're definitely, instead of just, these are water slide uh, decals. So, yes, you can do them with hot water, but you're going to be needing stuff like uh, Micro Skill Industries Micro Set to get them to go on. And to get them to conform to some of the surfaces, you are going to need some Micro Scale Industries Micro Sol. There are other ones available, but these are my preferred ones. These are particularly thick decals, and I can imagine, just from previous experience, they're going to be a bit of a beep beep to go on. So there's a decal set there. So I'm just going to put these back into the bag because a lot of these vintage kits, there is, for me, a little bit of yellowing on the number plate here. You sometimes get that with older decals, but I'm probably going to put the RC30 and the red ones on. And they're all reasonably crisp and in register. Um, they're printed quite well, even though they're Tamiya decals. And the VFR 750R that's on there is quite white, so it's quite crisp. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to put that to the side. So then we go into the box. So we've got a box of sprues and bits and bobs. There's a really interesting extra box. Ooh, extra box. Right, okay, what's in this extra box? Well, if I carefully pull this out, I've not had it out. Okay, flick this bit up. Flick that bit up. Slide it all out. There's a lot of clear parts here. Are they glued in? Are they stuck in? Okay, out the bottom. Right, so I'm going into this. What have we got? We have a clear front fairing with the windshield. Um, what I can see in this is there's, there's obviously some panel lines on here. But if you've looked at any of my earlier videos, I'm just going to take a little pointy stick. We talk about ejector pin marks. These are put in a mould and then they're pushed out. I don't think these are meant to be here. There's two dots here. There's one about there and one about there. I think they're ejector pin marks. How to get them out? Ooh, I reckon I could do it with an Ultimate Modeling Products um, Buffy stick. But it's going to be really hard to get in the back of there to clean that up. The idea of this clear part is you can decal over it and put it on the bike with the clear sides so you can see all the engine detail. Similarly, there is a belly pan in clear plastic as well. Now, the optical clarity of it isn't all that great. It's not like looking through glass. You get thick bits and thin bits, so you get different magnification. Um, there are ejector pin marks there, 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 that are going to be difficult to get rid of. And some of the edges aren't perfectly formed. Yeah, you can dress them up. And you've got your, your twin headlights there. One, two, three, four indicators. And that looks like the rear brake light unit. So, they do give you the clear plastic option if you want to show off. If you want to paint up the engine in a lot of detail or whatever then this part of it allows you to decal it up but still have um, all the detail underneath showing. Not sure if I would use that myself personally, um, but it is an option if you want to do like a... As a show on the box art actually, I'll put this to the side. I'll just go back onto the box art briefly. They show you all the clear parts on, showing all the stuff underneath. You might like that, or you might rather paint it like it's upside down, but you know, with actual colours on and not have the clear parts, it's an option. So that's that part. So what else have we got in the box? We have the usual Tamiya bag of rubber tyres. Now these ones are treaded, so it's not a racetrack bike. It is a road bike and they are nice soft rubber. I'm not going to take them out of the plastic. Beautifully detailed treads and there's no flash. There is no flash on these tyres. We've got a little spring for the rear suspension. 
we have the obligatory um, Tamiya supplied screwdriver. You can use them, but they tend to slip, so that's why I use my jeweler screwdrivers like these. But they do give you a little screwdriver in the kit. You have, I'm just trying to see, you've got two rolls of vinyl tubing in there. One will be for the brake lines, etc., and the slightly thicker one will be for your radiator hoses. If I just flick this over, you might just be able to make out, I don't know, maybe for that side, there's a, a sheet of mesh at the back that is for going over the, the lower cowling uh, for the oil cooler. And you have a nut for the rear wheel, uh, two screws there that are in black, slightly longer, so one will be, oh let me guess, swing arm, uh, one might be front wheel, and there's a silver one there, one will be the, the steering yoke, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, roughly eight smaller screws, which I'm guessing will be for holding the fairing on. So that's your typical um, ancillary pack. So that's that bit. Going into the kit itself, we have one, two further bags with three sprues in it. I'm just trying to see which one is which. That's B. Excuse me, I've got hiccups. That's B. Oh god, hiccups. That's C. Right, we'll go. Oh, hiccups. I've taken the staples out. These are normally stapled. I have had a look at this. So, sprue B, the second sprue, I didn't actually see what the, the clear one was, but sprue B, I'll just move this to the side. Sprue B is a sprue which has, I've just got a pointy stick here, they're in a silvery grey metallic coloured plastic. And I'm just looking at the top here of the sprue, and it says VFR, but it doesn't have a date on it, so I'm assuming it's original tooling. There was no other toolings. You have uh, foot pegs here. You have uh, the left side of the frame uh, leading up onto the rear subframe that the seat goes on. Uh, this looks like a wee side box. You have the two front brake discs. I'm just adjusting my lighting here a bit so you can probably get it a bit better. Um, you have the left side of the frame um, with the rear subframe for the seat, uh, possibly rear master cylinder here. You have a link rod which looks like for the um, gear change. Coming down on here, you have the, the rear single-sided swing arm, a spacer. Um, this looks like one of the exhaust parts of the downpipes. And there's the other one. Uh, another spacer here for the wheel. Uh, one of the halves of the front brake caliper, which is attached to a fork. So the good thing about this, there's, there's no chrome. I haven't seen any chrome parts. So you're able to paint these up without having to strip chrome off. Thumbs up, Tamiya. Um, on the left here, a few more auxiliary pieces, side panels, whatever, and the other front fork with the caliper on it. Uh, you've got two mirror inserts here. Now, this is a bit like the earlier kits. There's a bit of sinkage on here where it goes into the sprue gate. It'll probably tell you to paint it X11. Um, in my last part of my RZ250 build, I experimented with foil. I'm thinking about going to a hobby craft store and see if they do sheets of sticky back mirrored um, paper. But you're looking at making a couple of templates up for these. This looks like mirrored glasses and you're not going to get it with paint. Um, we've got the rear brake disc. We've got the rear sprocket. Quite a nice detailed chain with all the links in and the front sprocket this looks like mm, some sort of caliper linkage set up possibly on the front or the rear 
uh, actually probably a rear caliper. Um, we have another link pipe here for the exhaust and we have another down pipe going into a silencer. Again they're not chromed so you're going to be able to paint these up. Just looking to see what sort of panel lines is in these and another rear silencer. So that is Sprue B. It's actually looking quite good. So I'll put my camera back for a second. I don't have a zo zoom on this camera, so I'm just trying to show you the best I can. So that's Sprue B. In the same bag as Sprue B, which kind of annoys me. Um, because you can get... This white plastic is particularly soft. Um, this is Sprue C. Um... It tends to be made of a softer plastic, but uh, fortunately it's not too badly marked. That looks like possibly a, a radiator um, expansion tank. I'll put it down on the floor, on the floor, on the uh, the mat here, and see if we can get in closer. As I say, I don't have a zoom. So Spruce C has four spark plugs. One, two, three, four. This looks like something to do with the front fork yokes with being in a T. Good point on this. The front mudguard is a single casting with very small sprue gates on the side. So you're not going to have to dress up a seam line coming up the middle of it. Um, not quite sure what this is. It's a ah, number plate. That's what that is. Just go flick across to the right. And we have the tank. In a one-piece casting again. Again, you're not going to have to work on a seam line up the middle. You, uh, there's a little bit of flash on here, although there are supposed to be some panel lines here. I don't think they're quite supposed to be as pronounced as that, so there will be a bit of dress up on that. Uh, there's a tiny, tiny little spanner here. That's actually just used for tightening up the little nut for a single-sided wheel. So that's that part. Now the rear cowling is in two parts, it's quite big, so you've got the right hand side and the left hand side. Now I'm just going to have a, a bit of a closer look at this. There is quite good detail on it, there are a couple of little seam lines on it. Um, tiny little bit of flash on it. But they're really quite crisp and all... Now, I was on about ejector pin marks when they go into the mould and the little pins that pop them out. They seem to be all be on the inside here. There's one there. There's another one there. There's another one there. There's another one there. They're on the inside, so you're not going to have to worry about them. The wheels themselves are one-piece casts. Um... Nothing too spectacular. Reasonable. Nice and crisp. Um, nothing untoward in the way of flash, maybe one or two wee bits of seam lines that you might have to uh, just dress up a little bit. But we're getting into the modern kits now, so there's not, there's, ah, we're talking about flash, there's a tiny, tiny little bit of flash on the back corner here of this. And a tiny wee bit there, and a tiny wee bit there, but nothing like the earlier kits. So that is Sprue C, and that's a white plastic, so that's the wheels, left and right rear cowlings, fuel tank, front mudguard, spark plugs, and a few other bits and bobs. Not really an awful lot to the kit, so I'm going to pop that back in where it was, in with the Sprue B. And there's one final Sprue. So there's not a lot of parts to this. And it looks as if quite a lot of it is cast in one. Ooh, interesting. Right. Again, harder to see with the black. So this is Sprue D. It has nothing written on the back, so it's just original tooling. Just having a little look at the quality. Any ejector pin marks seem to be on the back of these parts. Likes of the seat. I don't know if you can quite make it out. I don't have a zoom, so I don't know how much detail you're getting. This is underneath of the seat. And there's one, two, three, four little round marks. These are ejector pin marks. So these are the wee pins that pop up and pop this out when it's being cast. 
again on here, there's one, two, three, four. They're all at the back. So I'm going to flick this on the front and have a little look at this. So what have we got in this part? We have got the rear... I'm getting beeps and I have no idea what it is. We have the rear mudguard part in one assembly. The crankcase, even though it's a V4, is all in one piece. Normally you'd have to glue the two of those together. So that's okay. Um, don't know what that is. That's the two fans. That's the rear seat pad. Looks like a fuel filter. Top or bottom yoke. Two top rocker covers. Sump. Um, radiator and oil cooler with the pipes in between. Um, one of the side casings. The uh, cylinder barrels are in two halves. One, two, three, four. Four carburetors. This looks like two coil packs. This is the top side of the seat. There's a little bit of sinkage in areas. It is slightly textured. So if you're addressing the sinkage, I don't know how to go with keeping the texture on there. You've got two mirrors. This looks like a water pump. Um, this is the rear shock assembly. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is. That's the top yoke with the handlebars, with the reservoirs and the brake levers on. Um, this is the rear paddock stand. Uh, left hand alternator casing. That looks like oil pump casing or water pump casing. Uh, we have the the tackle uh, the tackle rev the tackle and rev counter. Yeah, speedometer. Uh, whatever the the other gauges. We've got the rear chain guard, front headlights. Uh, this looks like the top of the airbox side stand. The little bracket that. Uh, secures the the front um, cowling. I'm not quite sure what that is. That is a casing that goes over the, the sprocket. Um, these are side fairing strips. That's basically it. It's a... Compared to the real early kits, I'm building an RZ250 uh, which was the second kit that Tammy ever made. The um, casting on these is a lot crisper, it's a lot sharper, there's a lot less flash. There are a few seam lines here and there, but they're not as bad. Um, all the ejector pin marks are on the underside. And there are only basically three main sprues plus the clears. So it's not a difficult kit to build. Um... And you've got the two options. Actually, you've not on this one. I thought this one actually had another sprue with the fairings. So I'm going to correct myself here because I'm confusing myself with another kit. This only has the clear parts for the front fairing. So you can either choose to leave them clear and put the decals on, showing what's underneath. Or you paint the fairing from the inside. Uh, and then put your decals on the outside to make it look like a fully painted bike. Um, so both options are available. I did think this kit had both um, clear parts and um, a separate fairing, but it doesn't. It's a different kit I'm thinking of. Overall, very nice kit. Considering the age of the kit being 28 years old, we're getting into more modern Tamiya kits. Now, Availability. A lot of the kits I've reviewed so far because I, I'm collecting sort of the vintage Tamiya kits are sort of like eBay, Japan or like Hen's Teeth, you can't get them. This kit is available and you can buy it now. And I'm going to pop up a link. Um, there are other companies available but this company does a range of models. It's called eModels and I'll just pop the link up now. There you go. This is this kit. They're doing it on a special offer as of this date, as of the 24th of May 2017, for £22.95 plus shipping. Now, for £23, you're getting quite a lot of kit for your money. Obviously, your paints and glues and everything's extra, but for £23, 
bloody good kit. It's going to be quite intensive for the decals because it's the original Tamiya ones. Um, but yeah, it's still available. And this is a 28 year old kit. Obviously they've made them after that date. I mean it was first tooled in 1989. So there'll be a 1989, 1990, 91, 92. Whenever I stopped actually making them. But if they're still available now. Even though it's a 28 year old kit. The original tooling. You could get a kit that's only a few years old. But this one comes with the genuine um, Tamiya decals. Which are not as good as the modern cartograph ones. And might take a bit more manipulation. So this is my inbox review of the Honda VFR 750R. Uh, for Honda Fanatics it's the RC30. Uh, it's Tamiya kit 14057. And it is the 57th kit that Tamiya ever made in their range. There's about 100, about up to 135 models at the moment. And it's in 112 scale. And e-models do have it in stock. So anyway... Not waffling on any longer. I've done, oh god, 37 minutes on a model kit review, which is longer than what I normally do. Hope you find it useful. If you're if you're wanting to buy a 112 skill model kit um, of a motorcycle and build it and fancy something a bit different, this one is still available. You can buy it, not like some of my vintage stuff. And hopefully this gives you an insight of what's in the box. So... From now, it's me, Terry's from Smooth Spot Shop. Speak to you later. Bye.